YouTube, it's Tracy from Entrepreneur Girl, and today is Tracy's Tuesday Tips, and we are going to be answering your questions on private label. So as part of this continuing journey with private label, I'm going to put the link below uh, where it shows the whole series. So if you've missed the other videos in the series, you can just click on that and they'll all be listed there for you. That's the great thing about playlists is it keeps it all in one spot for you. And you can just go ahead and look at those videos. I'm receiving a lot of questions since I've been putting out those videos, which I really appreciate because your questions you know reflect everyone's questions we all have the same questions and sometimes i make a video and i don't realize that i left out something or yeah i should have mentioned that and then when you ask me and i talk to you about it and answer your question i also jot it down and make note of it if i hear the same question over and over again to try to put it into a video because i'm sure so many other people have the same question and you're being really helpful you know to put it out there so keep the questions coming put them in the comments down below. Everybody feel free to answer other people's questions. It'll just kind of, you know, it's our own little YouTube family. So it's not just me that answers them. Everybody get down there and get busy and help each other out. Okay, so one thing that I'm getting asked is, what is the overview? What is the life cycle of launching a product? The first thing you do is choose a product. Second thing you do is find a supplier. The third thing you do is get your product and get your product into market. It means the fourth thing we have to do is create a listing. The fifth thing is launching your product, getting your PPC done, you know, your marketing done, getting your reviews, get it ranking. And then number six is we're going to grow our product and scale it up. And then number seven is basically just a rinse and repeat. You're going to try to create other brands other products and redo the cycle all over again and of course monitor your existing products so that's kind of the big overview that I think you were uh, kind of curious about another thing that I've been getting questions about is PayPal uh, yes so far I have only used PayPal I'm just now doing a product where I'm doing my first wire transfer. And the reason you hear about people uh, trying to use PayPal is that you have some level of recourse if it doesn't work out on the other end. If you're working with a company that you've never worked with, you don't know them, maybe they're only a one year or two year uh, gold supplier, they're relatively new and you're nervous, like I was, then I felt better using PayPal. And they get charged for that. They have to pay a fee for that. So they don't want to do that. That's not going to be their first choice. But you can push it, especially, definitely for the samples, probably for that first smaller order of like 50 to 100 units. When you start getting into the bigger units, you're probably going to get more of a pushback to do uh, something along the line of a bank transfer or something like that but you probably will have a higher confidence level and comfort level with that company. I'm kind of thinking that if it's been a company that's been in business for 10, 15 years under the gold supplier, that they're probably not going to be scam artists because, you know, they've been in business so long and I don't think, I think that would have been hard for them to do, you know, having mistreated people. I do take the company name and I put it into a Google search and just kind of see if anything pops up with people having problems. But if I've worked with them through the sample process and um, a small order, there's nothing on Google, they're a you know, 10, 15 year supplier, then I'm starting to feel more comfortable where I can uh, pay them in some other way. Now, as I made mention that people caught on to is I said that I had opened my own business FedEx account and I was using that. So I only had to pay China for the product and then I was able to pay my own FedEx account for the shipping. And so the risk was minimized that way because if I did take a loss, I was only taking a loss for the product and not for both the product and the shipping. So one thing I want to add to that is that when I started my FedEx account, 
um, it was actually going to be more expensive for me to ship it using my FedEx account than it was using China. Enough so that I took pause and thought, well, maybe that's not going to work. The key is, is that you have to talk to a representative. Um, all the major carriers have geographical representatives. So wherever you live, you have someone that's kind of overseeing that area that you can talk to. And what you need is you need discounts put onto your account. So for example, domestic shipping, so say I had it you know, come into Bo at a port, my products from China, I needed to have it shipped from the port to my house, I now get a 70% discount, 70% discount from that um, for setting up those discounts and taking the time to talk to a representative. So that's not small change, that's a lot of money. Also, they were able to give me contact information in order to get the best rate possible shipping it from China to the United States. So you definitely want to be talking to who's in charge. Again, you want to present yourself like you are a company. Uh, you are doing this. You're going to have lots of shipments, lots of products, because when people realize this about you, they are more, a, more willing to work with you, more willing to give you discounts, more willing to do those smaller sample sizes. A lot of questions are geared around, I can't get them to go down on their sample size. I couldn't either. I couldn't either for two months until I started being a big company. And when I was a big company and I was presenting like that, and I was like, look, if you can't do it, you know, let me know right away because I'm going to find other manufacturers because we want to, uh, you know, get 50 products in, or sorry, 50 units in for quality inspection and marketing research so that we can launch. And when you start talking like that, then everybody starts working with you and you get the discounts, you get the minimum order quantity that you want, you get better prices because they're seeing business for themselves. They're saying, okay, you're gonna use FedEx a lot, so I want to take care of you, so you stay with me and use our company. And China's doing the same thing. Oh, okay, well, I'm not really happy with this you know, smaller order and using PayPal, but I'm willing to do that because I'm gonna make more money from you in the future because you're gonna make in bigger orders and you know, we're gonna have this long-term relationship. So when you present that way right off the bat, which is what I wish I had done, then you're gonna go further. So I hope that answers all of those questions. I kinda wanted to give you an example of how this works for those of you that have never done it before. And so I just kinda came up with um, a product off the top of my head which was the foam purple charger, the power bank, which is under cell phone accessories. I'm not saying to sell this product, I'm just using it as an example. This product is ranked 45 in cell phone accessories. So the daily units sold is probably around 3,000. Daily revenue, if each unit is around $39, be over $100,000 every day in just this one product being sold. And there are lots of products like this randomly chosen one that make a lot of money every single day being sold on Amazon. So when you're researching products, you're trying to find an item that is already selling well that maybe you can sell better, maybe there's not a lot of competition on yet, something like that that you can take advantage of so that you get pretty good sales. If you look for a supplier on Alibaba, you can find these portable power banks for about $5 a unit. The cost is $15 per unit. I was able to find an MOQ on this item for 10, 10 units. So the most you would have invested would be $150 just don't think people realize sometimes how big Amazon is. Amazon is the number one platform in the world as far as e-commerce. Even if you just get a small smidgen percentage of that, it would be enough. You could just build it to what you want it to be. So a lot of questions are like, well, isn't this private label thing already saturated? See these YouTube videos like this one, and you're like, well, I just think too many people are doing it. 
but you're not really seeing the other side of that. And the other side is that Amazon is humongous and the pie is really big. And there's a lot of room for a lot of sellers in Amazon because there are so many sales, because it's an international marketplace. I'm not limited to selling in the States. So in order to get you thinking about the other side of that, I'm going to give you some Amazon statistics. Of 2014, two years ago, they had 244 million active users. 2013, so that was three years ago, there were already 89 Amazon warehouses in the U.S. The average amount that every single Prime user spends on Amazon is $1,500 per year per person. The non-Prime customer spends is $625 per year. In 2015, Amazon's gross sales were $107 billion. 2014, the quarter four sales on Amazon was $29.33 billion. Number of countries in which Amazon sent FBA packages to, over 200. I could go on and on with the statistics from Amazon, but I want you to get thinking about the other side of that. So $150 risk looks pretty good when you think about the benefits, the potential, the possibilities of what you could get. So I really don't see any reason not to try. At least you'll know if it works out. At least I'll know if it works out. But I have to try. Because if I don't try, what if? You know, I'll just sit around and I'll go, what if? And I'll have regrets and I'll wish that I had tried. So I'm not going to sit on the sidelines with this. I'm going to get in. I'm going to give it a go. How do you get product ideas or know what products are trending? Um, product ideas are everywhere. You know, knowing what trending, you can just kind of pay attention to what's going on. Like, I could probably just rattle off five things off the top of my head that I just happen to know that's trending right now and that you know is trending right now, too. You probably just haven't thought about it. You know, the Yeti cooler cups, those are huge right now. There's a lot of knockoffs happening with those metal um, cups. And in addition to that, the metal straws are trending. Um, people are starting to want other options besides plastic for their containers. So you're seeing a lot of glass bottles, glass straws, metal bottles, metal straws, anything like that is trending. Um, the new iPhone 7 just came out and a lot of iPhone accessories are trending. Everything from the workout band, you know, where you can wear your phone on your arm, to the selfie sticks, to anything associated with the iPhone. It's not an iPhone product that you can't sell, right? But any kind of supporting accessories for that is always a big deal. Going into quarter four, we're going into Christmas time. Toys is going to be hugely popular, of course, uh, during this time because parents are shopping online. Uh, generating ideas is not that hard. It's just thinking through it. What things do you like? What things does your spouse like, your neighbor like, your kids like? Um, what things do you know sell really well? Go to the best selling page. What are the top sellers on Amazon? Is there a window anywhere? Can you dig down um, maybe with the supporting accessory like we talked about? Can you dig down to where there's not a ton of competition? but you still have decent sales. So I think getting product ideas is pretty easy. Uh, then it's just researching it, making sure that you can buy it and sell it and still make a profit, You know, making sure that it's going to sell enough units per month, making sure that you can get on that first page because if you can't, you're not gonna have the sales that you need. And the way you know if you can get on the first page is how many reviews do they have? How much competition do you have? Do you feel like you can fight for a position on that page? So, you know, now looking back, I understand it so much better than I did. And um, it makes sense. A lot of it's common sense. And I think it's just fear. At least it was for me. I think a lot of it is just fear that I was going to pick the wrong product or, you know, just my luck. I'd save all this money and then buy the five products that wouldn't sell. You know, that type of mentality that I think hurts us. 
been doing this year. And that's what I've been sharing with you is just fighting through my own stuff to get to the other side. But those are product opportunities. Okay, um, photography. There's a lot of photography questions, but I want to do a photography video because I want to start showing, you know, what I'm doing with every step. I show getting the samples. Um, you know, now I want to show how I'm launching my product, the behind the scenes. So I'm going to answer um, like image ideas, like these types of questions. I'm going to go ahead and address that in a separate video. In the last question is dealing with getting ungated and in order to get some private label products into this particular category that they're asking about and a website is needed for that. I personally think that having a website really helps a lot when working with getting ungated. Um, there's a couple behind the scenes things with Amazon that I've been working with them on and being able to shoot them my website and my YouTube channel links and you know anything any social media that I have I feel has really benefited me so I would encourage you to do that you can find free website places and they're pretty much just drag and click so you could develop them uh, easily. You do not have to do a WordPress site. You do not have to hire somebody to make it just beautiful. I think uh, a basic website that you could do for free with not a lot of effort is pretty much a must do, something that I would encourage you to do. I don't have proof of that, but I think that that's true. That was the end of our questions today. Thank you so much. Keep them coming um, because, like I said, you know, I I try I sit here in my desk and try to figure out topics that would be beneficial to you. And um, when you're asking the questions, then I know it's beneficial to you. So that helps me out a lot to be able to pop out these Q and A's every once in a while so that your uh, questions are being answered and you know that I'm paying attention to your needs because I want to do that. Thank you guys and I look forward to learning with you next video. Bye.